Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before, and I'm here with McFarland Toys DC Multiverse, the Joker, the Clown, from the Three Jokers wave. Take a quick look around the box, great photo there on the back. There's that if you need it. I think it's time to start putting the uh, artist credits on the back. What do you guys think? Sculptors, painters, designers, photographers, everyone. Everyone that was involved. I want to I start seeing it. I think it would kind of act as sort of a statement saying like, hey, we are... D delivering twenty dollar figures with more more class and quality than than the competitors, and it would help sort of uh, unite the fan community. You know, give us uh, other other brands like NECA and Hasbro. Even they are putting their creators in front and center and and letting the community sort of know who's responsible. And I think I think us the multiverse collectors and fans. Uh, we deserve to know whose work we are supporting and and root for our favorite artists and get to know them a little bit better. Anyway, let's get these guys out of here and open up the clown. Oh, this guy smells really good with this rubbery, big big chunk of rubbery material here for the jacket. I love the colors. Uh, he really gives me um, kind of Sky Escape Joker vibes from the, the old classic Batman 89 figure. The Sky Escape Joker, I think it's this cranberry sort of pinkish of his jacket that's really making me think that. It's a great looking sculpt. I gotta say, I, I for the multiverse line, I do prefer figures like this that have a lot of like texture rendered into them. If, if they all sort of were this smoother quality, I wouldn't really probably be picking up nearly as many. But for this guy, it works really well. And man, he's just, he's just great to look at. I, I... So the, the head here, it's the same head as this killing joke joker but obviously he doesn't have a hat and he's got his full head of hair on here and it's just it's a great this is a great reuse uh you know again i mentioned how they they painted in this shadow under the under the hat here with his little with his creepy sort of reflection catching his eyes uh, just a fantastic way to differentiate a little bit more so when they're reusing these heads it doesn't feel as severe of a reuse. It just doesn't feel like you're getting the same thing again. Can't say enough great things about that face. I think it's probably my favorite Joker face to date from this line. Moving his head around, it's a little bit stiff. It's a little bit stiff, and I, I'll, I'll, I kind of feel like the level of detail and paint on his head is a little bit at odds with the rest of the figure. It's a little more simplistically rendered below the neck. Not a deal breaker, just kind of worth pointing out. Still a little stiff in there. But it's a little stiff in there, but I think he's going to be able to move as much as you need him to in the head area. Uh, you get a T-pose there at the shoulders, but these butterflies have nice little uh, subtle movements in there. Rotates at the shoulders, rotates at the bicep cut. I don't love when the bicep cuts like on a, on a, on a jacket or just a straight cut, but it is what it is. Really great clearance for those double elbows. And they don't look, you know, too bad when you look up in there from the side. This guy's a little floating a little bit, but you know, the ball joints are tucked up very far back there, and but he's still got nice wrist clearance, I, I think. Not, not the hugest, not the biggest range. Um, but he's got some. His pants here at the waist were kind of cinched by the um, the plastic thing holding them into the package. This will probably kind of revert back to the way it should be. Ditto for the jacket right there. I'll dunk him in some warm water, and these will probably fall back into the way that they're supposed to look. Great free and easy movement there at the at, at the diaphragm. Nice free and easy movement there. Tiny, tiny little bit of crunch, but not much. It needs to have more crunch, just considering that there's two cuts right here in the abdomen. There's no reason these guys don't have, these guys should have forward movement. This is bananas. This is just ridiculous to have this like great tooling um, and then not really have much 
forward movement. I've got a little bit, but come on. So his pants here, I know, I know people talk about this uh, pelvis piece as being a diaper. This one is maybe the most diaperish looking of all, all of them, but it's also kind of because he's got these high-waisted pants. It also kind of just gives me like mom jeans vibes, especially with this cut here. Um, is the, the shape of this cut, it gives his pelvis kind of a feminine look, which works for, the, again, these high-waisted pants, but wouldn't want to see everybody with them. But man, they have really put a lot of work into that pelvis uh, soft material. And now these figures are starting to get complete, just like sitting sitting down clearance at the hips and, and go all the way straight up 90 degrees, but without flaring out. Uh, sometimes this piece in the middle, just when you, when you lift the leg up, it pushes them out like that. It's not happening. And just super stretchy. Look at that when you kick them up. It's good stuff. I mean, you don't need Joker to be Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he can be. The legs are the same legs as in the Killing Joke Joker and I think the um, the gangster, the older one, which I do not have yet, but. And it makes sense to reuse these pants. And again, he's got this uh, knee length trench coat. He has pinstripes. There's enough differentiation there to not feel terribly repetitive. He comes with two accessories. One is yet another crowbar. I think we're just getting way too many crowbars right now. It makes sense. It's a good accessory for the Joker to have, but we've just seen so many at this point that I'm like, I'm, I'm all right with crowbars for a while, y'all. But I do appreciate like the way he's got one accessory hand and this one sort of open hand and he can sort of grasp it like that, which is a great creepy sort of pre beat down or post beat down. Um, sort of pose with this crowbar, but actually you give him this crowbar that came with the new, the, with the three jokers red hood. And I kind of think the scale is a better match for him. This thing's a huge, long spreader bar. Whereas you take the crowbar from this joker and I think he actually is a better match for that red hood and the way his hands work. So. I think they should have just swapped those crowbars. Or uh, what I really think is they shouldn't have given two figures from the same way of a crowbar as an accessory. But the real fun accessory here, I think, is this Joker fish, which could maybe stand to have a little more detail, maybe painted onto the face or something. Looks all right. These look a little... I feel like some of those details aren't totally coming out the way they should. But I really appreciate all the different ways he can hold this accessory, too. Like, he can... Hold it like this in his traditional accessory hand. Makes sense that way. And you can hold it in his sort of open palm here as if he's sort of presenting it to you. Or facing himself as if he's giving this sort of Hamlet-esque soliloquy. Alas, poor Joker fish. I knew him well. Or in his open palm, you can kind of wedge it between his thumb and, and the rest of his hand like this, as if he's kind of just holding the, holding it like a limp dead fish. That kind of maybe my favorite, favorite one. Take a look at him here. He's great looking. I think this is kind of going to become my new main Joker. It doesn't beat out the Killing Joke one in terms of like this guy still has an edge as far as just look and mood, uh, but for it for a traditional classic comic style Joker. This guy's the winner. He, I think he's superior to this Rebirth one and the Arkham Asylum one as well. I'll, I'll put all the Jokers next to each other. Once I have the completed three Jokers wave, I will I will put them all together and even include this Mortal Kombat one and I'll do a Joker ranking video. So so stay tuned for that if you want to if you want to see them all in one place. Here he is next to a couple of his sworn enemies also from the three Jokers wave and yeah I think we're starting to really get some some very good classic versions of these characters. So if you're if you're kind of picking and choosing which which DC multiverse figures you want, I know a lot of people are they're just more interested in some, sort of classic DC characters. So say for example, if you're trying to find a Joker to go with these guys, I think this is the one to get. 
there you go, guys. Uh, the clown, I think this is the new go-to Joker. I'd really love to turn this into a, a Sky Escape Joker, even though he didn't have, like, the vest that the original had. He's got the right vibes. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite Joker is from this Three Jokers wave, and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.